Hello, Bobby Torres of Firefox Recording here to share with you my approach to cymbal miking within the metal production. Okay, so here we are at this studio. Um, I've had a lot of people ask me um, advice on how to properly mic cymbals when it comes to metal production. And uh, it's a tricky topic. For the most part, myself included, uh, we all learn traditional um, cymbal miking when we go to school for audio production. Uh, and I found that when it comes to metal, traditional overhead placement generally doesn't work. Uh, and the main reason why is you just have too many cymbals to cover and you want to have maximum control. Uh, I mean, if you just have two sets of overheads, or, or I should say a pair of overheads, uh, let's say the drummer asks you to turn up the china. The second you turn up the china, your hi-hat might be too loud, or your balance with your snare might be off, or your ride cymbal might be too loud, or your, you know, your left crash might be too loud, so on and so forth. So, um, you know, what I'm about to show you is nothing unique to me. This is pretty much, I don't want to say it's standard, but a lot of metal audio engineers, and uh, along with hard rock audio engineers, uh, utilize this approach, so this is nothing unique. Um, so yeah, so I have a simple setup here. This is pretty typical for me. Um, bunch of cymbals. We got a China, uh, ride, crash, crash, little splashy guy right here, um, and a hi-hat, right? So now, again, traditionally, you know, people generally just stick up two overheads, then maybe mic the, you know, the hi-hat. Uh, for me, this never really made sense because the hi-hat generally bleeds into everything. Uh, I actually, you know, throughout the years, I've had the opposite problem. I would have too much hat in my overhead, so miking it just kind of seemed like redundant. Now, in this case, my hi-hat is mic'd. That's because I approach cymbal miking in a completely different way from uh, overheads. For me, the cymbal mics are cymbal mics. They are not overheads. Um, you know, again, most people learn to try to get a great overall sound in your overheads, uh, like your entire kit, your toms, your snare. I've even heard people talk about getting a nice kick drum sound in your overheads. If I'm recording indie rock, or, you know, I don't know, any, pretty much any other genre that's not metal or hard rock, maybe I would give that a shot. And, you know, from time to time, I do experiment with that myself. But when it comes to heavy, hard-hitting music where you want to hear the cymbals crystal clear and you want to have maximum control, uh, you know, if the, if, again, if the drummer asks you to turn up the china or a crash or a ride, you want to have that flexibility. Um, and that's why I approach cymbal miking the way I do. So, if you look here, I have four different uh, condenser mics on my cymbals. Um, I'm using the Shure SM81s, but I am not picky. I will use anything. Nowadays, even the cheapest, crappiest mics you could buy will get the job done just fine. So the one thing I want to point out is that my overhead mics, or I shouldn't even call them overheads, I think of them as cymbal mics, are generally between six inches to a foot above the cymbals, right? If you look here, here is my crash cymbal. I don't know if you could tell in the video. Right here. Yeah, so that's about, I don't know, six inches to eight inches, nine inches, 10 inches, something like that. I'm not too scientific about it. I pretty much just eyeball it. And for me, the sweet spot is between six inches and a foot above the cymbal. And I mic along the outside edge of the cymbal. For me, the goal is to completely get as little hi-hat in my cymbal mics as possible. And also, I want as little snare in my cymbal mics as possible as well. Okay, so starting from left, from audience perspective, left to right. This cymbal mic is picking up both my china and my uh, ride cymbal. This cymbal mic is picking up just the drummer's right crash or our left crash. This condenser mic or cymbal mic is picking up the splash and the crash cymbal. And then finally, I have a, um, I have a microphone on my hi-hat. And I mic my hi-hat when I'm micing my cymbals in this manner, so I have flexibility where I, if I want more hat, I have the mic on the hat that I could just bring it up in the mix. But at the same time, I have as little hi-hat in all of my cymbal mics as possible. Now, I know traditionally you want a nice snare sound in your overheads, but again, when it comes to metal, I do not think of my cymbal mics as overheads. To me, they are cymbal mics. Traditional overhead miking, for the most part, captures a nice stereo image of your entire kit. And yes, you are correct. When it comes to traditional overhead miking, that is true. It, it should grab a nice stereo image of your entire kit. Um, but again, in this case, they're just cymbal mics. So what I do to glue the sound of my kit together is I use a mono room mic. And uh, I'm going to show you a cool trick here. Check this out. I have a small diaphragm condenser that always sits behind that shelf at all times. That's completely opposite the drum set. So here's my drum set in one corner of the room. Then I have this shelf with some horror films, a Super Nintendo controller, and a Sega Genesis controller. You probably can't see it, but anyway, yeah, you can't really see it. I have a VHS tape in the way. Hold on. 
I mean, if I brighten that up, you can see it. I don't know. Nah, you can't see it. Yes, so either way, I have another uh, small diaphragm condenser mic that is behind the shelf intentionally. And what the shelf does is, I know this seems crazy, but it actually acts as a natural low pass filter filtering out all of the uh, high end of the drum set. So you end up with this nice bombastic warm uh, mono room mic that sounds awesome when you blend it in with the rest of the kit because it kind of glues the sound of the kit together. So again, just to recap, I have a microphone on each individual cymbal, and if I don't have enough microphones for each individual cymbal, I will mic in pairs. So for example, this China and this ride is sharing one microphone. This cymbal just gets its own microphone. These two cymbals get their own microphone. It's a pair sharing that one microphone, and then the hat gets its own microphone. Pretty simple. Again, I do not get too scientific with it. I do not whip out the tape measure or anything like that, um, because there's no reason to. The room mic back there glues the sound that it get together, and then I just balance these cymbals to where they sound right in the mix. It's extremely simple, and I do not over compress my cymbals. Uh, reason being is I don't want this thing, this annoying hi hat, to you know take over the sound of my cymbal sound. If you keep the natural dynamic range of your cymbal mics intact, it's easy to keep the hi hat at bay and the snare drum at bay, uh, and it and it works. I've been doing it for years like this. I spent years and years and years struggling trying to get a decent cymbal sound, and until I stumbled upon this technique, um, I never had much success but this technique always wins out, at least when it comes to uh, metal production. If you have found this video helpful, like, comment, subscribe, and share. And don't forget to click the little bell icon in order to be notified every time I upload one of my weekly videos on all things metal and rock production. You can both like and follow me on Facebook and Instagram. Links are in the description below. And if you'd like, you can download my free quick EQ guide that demonstrates all of my EQ settings that I always return to at starting a mix. There is a link below in the description. Until next time, happy recording.